Hello everyone, my name is Sparrow, and today we're going to talk about tokenization and why it sucks. The idea of making a token version of another character, usually of a white male character, by replacing them with a minority or a woman, well, it just sucks on every single level. For one, the idea behind it is to add diversity. Main problem is it's the most artificial and fake type of diversity there is. That makes it clear they're only pandering to the vocal groups on Twitter or the culture critics, but not actually doing representation normally, like how it used to be. Not only does it tarnish the integrity of the main character to have a token knockoff leeching off his own name and appearance solely to get brownie points that are useless it also really is insulting to women and minorities it really just suggests that they are inherently less interesting than white men and so they have to piggyback off the name recognition of a white man because they can't stand on their own and that's just plain bullshit before when it came to minority characters or female characters the standard was was to actually make an interesting character that wasn't piggybacking off an established character like they would actually be their own person and now that's not the case anymore whenever there's an announcement of a new minority character they are always sharing the identity of an established character either they have the same name at once like with spider-man or hawkeye or they're taking up an old mantle like Miss Marvel. Think of it like before, when there was no tokenization and each character was their own. You know, you had Storm, you had Blade, you had Black Panther, you had War Machine. Well, he actually was Iron Man for a stint, but the way he went about it wasn't exactly tokenized, but it made sense in the story. You had Kitty Pride, Jubilee, Night Thrasher, Luke Cage, Psylocke, well, bit of a funny story there, but that's besides the point. And one of my favorite examples, again, is the new mutants. Let's take a look, shall we? From left to right, you have Warlock, an alien robot. <laughs> but besides that, you have Danny Moonstar, or Mirage, Native American, Karma, Vietnamese, also handicapped, also lesbian. Yeah, she had all of those traits at once and she's not token. Magic, Russian, Wolfsbane, Scottish, Magma, while well, from Nova Roma, basically a secret Roman society within the Amazon rainforest of Brazil. Cypher, white American from the north. Cannonball, white American from Kentucky. And Sunspot, black Brazilian. Also, you may notice in this picture that there are more women than men. Even County Warlock, there are only four men, and without their little robot buddy, there's only three to five women. And New Mutants always put more emphasis on the female members than the men, and no one cared. You know why? Because they were all well-written characters. Yeah, as it turns out, we've always had diverse teams. We've always had good women in those teams. We've always had been fair, but we didn't have to virtue signal to the blue-haired land whales on Twitter and cater to their ever-changing, ever-increasing demands and constraints to make sure they don't throw a bitch fit because someone looks attractive or because they got hurt or because a man outshined a woman or whatever fake problem they come up with next. And all the women and all the minority heroes stood on their own without this token idea. Like even characters that could be considered token back then like say James Rose or She-Hulk were unique spins on those characters and they don't feel like they're token knockoffs made to get brownie points for diversity. As it turns out, character development and portrayal is not like a seesaw where one has to be brought down to elevate the other. You can actually bring both groups up at the same time. And the idea that you need to make token versions of these characters to actually connect with them, well, it ties into identity politics, which I've already covered. In other words, it's total bullshit and no one buys it. Like, people aren't stupid. They can tell they're being pandered to by these creatively bankrupt and greedy, agenda-driven executives that don't actually care about the story. They just care about getting quotas down. Most people just want to see a good story. And this kind of thing totally ruins that 
it totally ruins good storytelling and character development to try to pander to the groups. And they can see what's happening. They can see that their favorite stories are getting diminished and it's supposedly meant to cater to them and they don't buy it at all. Sure, Marvel and the others like to maintain this idea that everyone loves the politically correct stories except those toxic white men, but that's not the case. No one buys these stories. No one likes them. You only have to do a quick search to find tons of women and minorities who hate it as much as we do. They just scapegoat white people because that's literally the only excuse they can come up with. They assume that anyone who doesn't like it must be a white man. Trust me, I've been there. And that's because they can only see people for arbitrary characteristics, not the actual person. I mean, I'm a white man, yeah. And my favorite show at one point was Static Shock. Yeah, that's right. Static Shock about a black teenager. I didn't care about that. I didn't care about any of that. It was a fun series with a good cast. And that's what matters. And in an ironic twist, my favorite Blue Beetle is actually the Jaime Reyes version of Blue Beetle. A Hispanic. And which is funny because you could say he's a token character, but if that's the case, then he's on the highest end of the most developed and well-created token characters. Like, he's not actually on the same level of shittiness that all the other tokens would follow. So, I can bend the rules a little bit for him, because I genuinely like him. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for just about any other token in the comic books because they define them for their traits first and not their actual characterization or anything. That's partially the reason why the Kamala Khan version of Miss Marvel is such a complete and utter failure. She was made first and foremost to be a political statement, not a character. As such, she never goes through any struggle, loses, has any challenges. Never does she actually feel like a person in this universe. She's meant to represent women and Muslims and all that. She doesn't actually go through any of the motions that the past Marvel characters would go through. And that's why she's so painfully boring just to read through. Other than that, her stories consist of these Disney Channel tween sitcom bullshit that no Marvel person would actually want to read. And unfortunately, that sets the stage for all of SJW Marvel when you think about it. They actually don't really feel like proper superhero stories, but these gimmicky, slice-of-life, far-left political bullshit that is being passed as entertainment today. A similar deal could be said with Miles Morales. It's telling that his most iconic and beloved portrayals are not in the comic books, where he's painfully, painfully boring. It's in the Spider-Verse movie and in Spider-Man PS4. And that's because they took out all of the SJW elements and actually made him into a character. And even then I would still say he's inferior to Peter Parker because he's just plain unneeded. Most of the people who say they like Miles Morales don't really like him. They either think of him exclusively based on his portrayal in Spider-Verse or Spider-Man PS4 or they just simply like the idea of a black Spider-Man, not really thinking about him as a character. Within the actual comic fandom, and the Spider-Man fandom especially, there are more people who like Ben Riley and Kane Parker than they do Miles Morales. You see, when a story doesn't have to constantly slave over making a character look good so they positively represent an identity, but actually treats all characters as equal with flaws, with strengths and weaknesses, with ups and downs, then the story itself actually becomes enjoyable. Like anyone can actually get into it for that reason. I mean, do you ever wonder why black people, the people that they're trying so hard to pander to, don't actually buy these comics at all? But they often read anime and manga, which more often than not doesn't feature any black characters whatsoever? Well, it's because they all carry universal themes that people can get into. Stories matter, not fake representation. So when you get down to it, what really matters most is telling a good story. And as for characters, the best route to go in is to make new, original, and exciting characters that just so happen to fall into different groups. If you do that, you will end up with a diverse cast without really even trying, and everyone will be happy because of it. There's more important things than just checking off proverbial boxes. Story comes first, 
character comes first. That's why these woke stories so often fail because what they value first and foremost is what each trait a character represents and not what kind of character they are. They shouldn't be making these token minority versions of famous characters that have none of the depth or personality or appeal of the originals. What they should be doing is making original characters with these different traits and treating them just as human as anyone else. Because at the end of the day, everyone is human. Anyways, that's all I have to say on this topic. For now, this is Sparrow signing off.